Hey, I'm back. I'm going to finish reading chapter two. Can I get back to you on that? I shouted and fell over. Don't play with me that way, she replied, and dropped her knees and felt under my shirt for the patch, then tickled my belly. I love you too much to get jerked around by you. The next day, the letter came from my dad's lawyer, and that's the last time until the car ride I heard mom hissing, sugar. I must have fallen asleep in the car because I woke up when it stopped and mom was tugging on the speaker wire from my tape player like I was a fish she was reeling in. Ooh, are we there yet? I asked and rubbed my ears. Almost, she said. Your dad's place is up the street. I wanted to stop and talk over a few things before we arrive. Most of all, I want to say my real goodbye to you now because when I see your dad and grandma, Everything's going to be weird, and I might be too weird and don't want you thinking I'm bailing out on you or something. She held me by the cheeks and kissed me like you would a picture in a frame. Listen to your dad, she said. He is your dad. But if anything seems out of whack, you call me right away and I'll come and get you, okay? She held my chin in her hands and stared real hard into my eyes before looking toward her purse. Now, this is for you, she said, and she handed me an envelope folded in half. There's money in it, not play money, emergency money. I opened the envelope. There was a $20 bill and a page lined with paper, what was sorry, a page of lined paper with rows of quarters taped to it. She read the puzzled look on my face. The quarters are for a payphone, she explained. Can I call you now? Because I already think the whole thing is out of whack. Oh, Joey, this is not out of whack, she stressed. You are starting from scratch with your dad, so everything feels strange. Then she put the car in gear, and I knew she was being brave, so I didn't say another word. We slowly rolled forward, and just up the street, Grandma was sitting on the porch smoking, and next to her was a thin man dressed in neatly ironed clothes. He was sweeping the porch, but leaned the broom handle against the wall when he saw us. Mom stopped and waved, then opened her door. I got out as Grandma and Dad scrambled down the steps. Before he said anything to me, he tried to kiss Mom. but She yanked her head back as if Dad's lips were electrified. Then she gave him a frozen look and said to me, Joey, go get your luggage out of the trunk. I got the keys out of the ignition, went around to the back of the car, and my head was spinning so fast, I couldn't pluck one thought out of the blur of them. The two of them being weird together was making me think I locked myself in the trunk. If I locked myself in the trunk, they might forget about being mad at each other and focus on me. But I canceled that thought. And by the time I came back, dragging my army duffel bag, no one was talking. They were staring so hard at each other with their mouths tightly or slowly opening and closing like big goldfish. I figured I had gone deaf from bad nerves and started twisting my fingers into my ears like when they needed cleaning. Don't worry, Dad finally said. I'll take good care of him. I heard that loud and clear. And by the time he was holding the, by that time he was holding the box of patches. I'll change it every day like I do my nicotine patch. Or every other day, depending. Well, Mom cut him off. Joey, follow the prescription. Joey will tell you, she said sharply. Don't worry, he said. But I do, Mom replied. You might mess with my head, but if you mess with this kid... She didn't finish her thought out loud because she had finished it in her mind so many times. And it was making her so huffy, she was about to lose it. So it was my turn again to help her out. I reached for her hand, and when she glanced over at me, I winked our giant eye-squishing secret wink, which was a reminder to chill out. She smiled, and instead of going off the deep end, she swooped down by my side. She fixed the hair back over my getting better bald spot, then gave me a hug. Call me, 
she whispered in my ear. Call often so I can say that I love you. And then she turned, stiff, stiffly marched like a wind-up toy soldier toward the car, got in, and drove off. That's the end of chapter two.